Hello, my name is Menas Karamanis, and I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Edinburgh. Today, I'm going to present some recent work I've done, along with my supervisors, Florian Beutler and John Pickock. The topic of this presentation is not strictly about cosmology, but it is about the tools that we use to perform modern cosmological analysis. And I hope that you will find the ideas presented here today useful for your own research. Let us begin with a brief outline of this presentation. We will start by discussing some basic concepts of Bayesian parameter inference, as well as MCMC, which is the main tool that we use to do parameter inference. Then we will introduce the idea of preconditioning as a way of simplifying the parameter inference problem. And we will focus on the use of normalizing flows as the optimal preconditioning technique. Following that, we will briefly introduce antithetic sampling, a complementary approach to the normalizing flow preconditioning. Finally, we'll see some empirical tests on, on synthetic and realistic applications. Starting with a bit of context, the main object of Bayesian inference is the posterior distribution. The posterior distribution is defined as the probability distribution of the parameters of our model, given the data and the model. In cosmology, the models that we use are often parameterized by a collection of both physical and nuisance parameters, such as omega matter, F sigma 8, FNL, and so on. The data, on the other hand, are often in the form of some summary statistics, meaning things like the power spectrum or the two-point correlation function or some other uh, statistic that we often use to characterize either the galaxy distribution or other information that we obtain using uh, observations. In other cases, it is even better to use just the raw data. In any case, Bayesian inference offers a consistent and general way of comparing our models to the observations in all of those cases. But what exactly is the posterior distribution, which is the main object of Bayesian inference, and why is, is it so useful for astronomy and cosmology? Well, the reason is that knowing the posterior, we can compute multidimensional integrals, such as expectation values. Those include mean values of parameters, along with their respective uncertainty, for example, or other things like the one and two dimensional marginal posterior distributions, which are often the main result of modern cosmological analysis. Uh, you can see, for example, here the DES, uh, one dimensional, two dimensional marginal posteriors for omega matter and uh, sigma eight. All right, now that we understand the importance of the posterior distribution, the next question we should ask is, can we compute the posterior? Unfortunately, the answer is almost always no, but in most cases, we can sample from it. Now, what we mean by sampling is producing a collection of points uh, in parameter space that follow the posterior distribution, meaning that they characterize the posterior distribution. There are many ways of sampling from a distribution, but by far the most commonly used one, and for a good reason, is Markov chain Monte Carlo, or MCMC in sort. Uh, in the figure on the right, you can see the number of astronomy papers mentioning the word MCMC somewhere in the text during the past couple of decades. Well, as you can see, the use of MCMC in astronomy grows exponentially, it's here. Let us now see how MCMC generates samples from distribution. This is often done in a local fashion, meaning that the sampler moves in parameter space, collecting samples by performing a series of many small steps. This is not completely random. And at the end, the collection of samples or the Markov chain, as it's called, has more samples in high probability regions and fewer samples in low probability regions in a consistent way that, so that in order to characterize the target distribution itself. One can then use those samples, let's call them theta, for example, to compute integrals of this form by replacing the integration with finite sums over the Markov chain samples that we collected during the MCMC run. This is in essence how MCMC works and how we use them. Now, one important thing to remember from this is that MCMC methods are based on the local exploration of the posterior mass, the probability mass. And thus, its performance is affected by the local characteristics of the distribution, like the local structure of the distribution. For example, in this uh, G for GIF on the right, you can see that this distribution looks like a banana. So it has a very curved uh, local structure. As we will see, this will affect the 
performance, the sampling performance of MCMC in this example. Now, the local nature of MCMC means that poorly scaled distributions can hinder the sampling performance of MCMC, meaning that many more smaller steps are needed to cross the distribution, thus increasing the, co the computational cost of the method. Now, this becomes better understood by looking at the plots on the right. The elongated stretched shape of the top distribution makes it harder to sample compared to the spherically symmetric distribution at the bottom. Fortunately, there is a way to transform the first distribution on top, on top into the second at the bottom and thus simplify the problem of sampling from those distributions. In this example, this is done in the simplification, is done using kind of fine or linear transformation. Unfortunately, this only works on simple example, examples like this one and fails completely when the distribution has a more peculiar shape, like the banana shape distribution that we've seen in the previous slide. Now, the process of getting very complicated distribution and making it making look more normal in, in a sense is called Gaussianization or preconditioning. Now, in general, finding the optimal transformation that Gaussianizes the distribution is not trivial and often requires expert knowledge. A common example in gravitational wave analysis is the choice to fit the so-called chirp mass at the mass ratio of the two masses of the binary black hole system instead of just fitting the two masses directly. Now, this effectively, what it does is it decorrelates the parameters and simplifies the problem of sampling from that posterior distribution. Such examples of transformations or change of variables exist in all fields of astronomy and cosmology, and they are in general very model dependent. So they, they require expert knowledge to know how to transform those variables in what way in order to get what benefit. The question we're trying to answer with our work here is whether there is a simple yet effective method of finding the optimal transformation that would make sampling from target distribution trivial. The answer to that question seems to be the use of normalizing flows. Normalizing flows are a series of invertible mappings, so bijective mappings, that are often parameterized by flexible neural networks. Normalizing flows can be trained to transform a difficult to sample target distribution into one that resembles a Gaussian, so a spherical symmetric distribution, which is much easier to sample, of course, as, as, as we've argued so far. Now, let's continue by seeing the results of applying a normalizing flow in a very challenging distribution. In this slide, we will see how a normalizing flow transforms a 20 dimensional Rosenbrock distribution into a Gaussian one. We can see that the transformation is gradual and improves during training. At the end, the transformed distribution looks nothing like the initial banana safe target distribution. And this, of course, much, much easier to sample from the transformed distribution. Another example is the case of the 20 dimensional Gaussian mixer. This is a distribution with two well separated peaks that are transformed into a normal or Gaussian distribution. As we can see here, the normalizing flow can even bring different peaks or modes of the posterior closer together, thus bridging the gap and making something much, much easier as multimodality, so cases with many peaks, are one of the most difficult and the most challenging cases an MCMC can handle. In order to train the normalizing flow, we need samples from the actual distribution. Now we can use MCMC to obtain a few such samples and use them to train the normalizing flow. Then we can use the normalizing flow to precondition the target distribution and make sampling easier. We can perform those two steps many times, first using MCMC to train the normalizing flow and then using the normalizing flow to precondition MCMC. The initial approximation to the normalizing flow transformation does not need to be perfect. It will still accelerate sampling until, a more, until more samples have been collected and a better approximation is built. Now, there are many ways we can build the initial approximation to train the normalizing flow. We can either use a sort MCMC run or a nested sampling run with just a few iterations, or do something much more sophisticated like the iterative scheme presented here, where we sample for a while with the MCMC, then we retrain, sample, retrain, sample, retrain, and so on until a good enough approximation is uh, 
it's actually there by the normalizing flow, and then we just continue running CMC until we collect it enough samples. There are many ways we can do this, and this is not uh, the best one, but something that from our experience seems to work in most cases, and it's very easy to implement, of course. Now, before we move on to the empirical evaluation of the method, I would like to introduce another simple tool that can improve the sampling performance of MCNC. The idea behind antithetic sampling is to sample from a posterior distribution by always moving to the other side of it. Now, remember, when we introduced MCMC, we said that this is done in a local fashion. We always move close the way we were, way we were before. Now, this is not the case with antithetic sampling, although antithetic sampling is an MCMC method. Now, here, we're trying to propose new samples always on the other side of the peak of the distribution. That way, we introduce anti-correlations into the Markov chain. Anti-correlation or negative covariance between chain elements can reduce the variance of the chain and give us more accurate results with fewer iterations. This is a known variance reduction mechanism. In our case, this is achieved using a non-symmetric proposal in the metropolis hastings algorithm, as you can see on the plot on, top right, on the top right. It's worth mentioning that this method only works if the posterior distribution is already transformed into an approximately Gaussian distribution. So we only recommend applying this at the very end once the normalizing flow is fully trained and the posterior distribution is very well normalized or Gaussianized. To run our tests, we use the Zeus MCMC code that we released publicly a while ago. Zeus is a Python implementation of the ensemble slice sampling technique, and it is designed specifically to sample specifically from highly correlated distributions. You can find the documentation for Zeus on this website or in my GitHub page. Now, Zeus is based on ensemble slice sampling, and ensemble slice sampling is a method that differs from most MCMC methods in the sense that it is not based on the common Metropolis Hastings paradigm. Instead, it is based on slice sampling, as the name suggests. Slice sampling, slice sampling is a rejection free method. Slice sampling is based on the observation sampling from the distribution F, as you can see on the left plot here, is actually equivalent to uniform sampling from the region underneath the graph of F and then mar marginalizing by just discarding the Y samples, the values of the Y variable in that sense. Now, combining this with an ensemble of parallel and communicating walkers, sorry, an ensemble of parallel communicating chains, which we call walkers, as you can see on the right, we get the final method, which we call ensemble slice sampling. It's a highly efficient method, which is able to adapt to local correlations between, par uh, between parameters. Let me show you a few examples of how this actually works before we actually see the examples of normalizing flow preconditioning. Now, this is a very simple example, although the distribution here is not uh, it's not trivial by any sense. So this is the ring distribution. It's a highly nonlinear distribution. Here, comparing Zeus, which you can see in blue, with existing MCMC methods, like the two versions of MC in orange and green, respectively, we see that Zeus maintains a higher sampling efficiency, even in high dimensions, in which most of MC chains get stuck. As you can see, increasing the number of dimensions, the problem gets more and more difficult, but Zeus is able to maintain a high level of efficiency even when other samplers get stuck. In multimodal cases, like this one, it's a Gaussian mixture, where the target distribution is characterized by multiple peaks, Zeus is able to jump from peak to peak. This is a condition that it's necessary in order to get unbiased estimates. In many cases, this is violated in practice due to the inability of the used sampler, like I'm seeing this example, to propose candidate samples in the other peak, as you can see here in orange and uh, green. Finally, in the realistic sample of Baryon acoustic oscillation parameter estimation, with 22 free parameters, Zeus outperforms both versions of MC by a factor of nine, seven times respectively in terms of the overall efficiency. Furthermore, Zeus is less sensitive to its initialization and generally converges much faster than the alternatives. Now, going back to the normalizing flow preconditioning testing, the first test we ran was the 20-dimensional Rosenberg distribution that we discussed before. 
Although artificial, this test is an extremely challenging one for most MCMC methods. We first run MCMC using Zeus on this distribution. Then we precondition the distribution using a normalizing flow using the iterative scheme that we discussed before and sample again. And at the end, we use antithetic sampling. The Markov chains are shown in the figure on the right, where you can see that the MCMC only case on the top does not look very good. The third plot shows Markov chains that mix much more rapidly due to the applied preconditioning. And the last plot shows the Markov chains produced by the antithetic sampling method to result in almost independent samples, achieving a maximum sampling efficiency. We then applied the same methods to a real world application. In particular, we use the DES gear one analysis pipeline, which includes 27 free parameters. By preconditioning the sampler, we use Zeus in this case too, we increase the sampling efficiency by a factor of more than 13. And by using antithetic sampling by a factor of more than 200 times compared to the standard case. This means that it only costs five to seven model evaluations on average to get an independent sample instead of thousands of evaluations that we often need for this uh, posterior distribution. In conclusion, we argue that normalizing flow preconditioning can be applied to any target distribution and MCMC method, no matter how difficult to sample the target distribution is. In practice, we can even argue, in principle, we can even argue that the more the more difficult distribution is, the better the benefits of applying normalizing flow precondition. Another benefit of normalizing flow precondition is that one can apply this technique without interfering into the MCMC method itself. You don't need to modify the method itself because normalizing flow precondition works at the interface between the MCMC and your distribution. Furthermore, using normalizing flow precondition and antithetic sampling, we manage the sample from the DES year one posterior almost 200 times faster than without those tools. And we know that sampling for, from such posteriors in modern galaxy surveys is the main bottleneck that we often have to face in analysis. Now, in the future, we plan to include the normalizing flow precondition method into our code, Zeus. You can find the code in this link or in my GitHub page. Thank you very much.